I was in a, a position where I took some time off of acting. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to do it anymore. Um, uh, so I took some time off and in this industry, you're only as good as your last project. Meine Schwester und mein Freund, mit dem ich seit drei Jahren zusammen bin, beim Sex erwischt. Und wie geht's dir? Kannst du irgendwo schlafen? Ich kenne da jemanden. Sei vorsichtig, er ist kompliziert. So don't close your eyes. First of all, congratulations to the new film Perfect Addiction. Um, and I want to ask you, what was the exciting thing um, about the script of Perfect Addiction that wanted you to play the role? Um, I mean, there were a lot of exciting points that really stood out to me when I first started reading the script. Um, but an interesting story, when I first got the breakdown for the, um, for the role, I kind of wanted to play Caden. Uh, mm -hmm. I really, you know, enjoyed the aspect of being hero or, um, you know, the good guy and not the villain. Um, that's always what kind of enticed me to want to be an actor was to do, you know, the, uh, the good guy rom-coms or like the good guy hero films. But, uh, I was at a time in my life that kind of was more fitting for the role of Jax. And at first, you know, I was reading into Caden and I was like, man, I'd rather audition for this. And I even remember talking to my reps about it and just being like, hey, do you think, you know, we could talk to casting and ask if I could read for Caden instead of Jax? And they were like, oh yeah, maybe we could, but just take a look at Jax and tell us what you think, you know, sleep on it. So I did. And then, I don't know, something just clicked. I read the role of Jax and I just saw a vulnerability that um, I was kind of experiencing in my own life. Uh, I had, you know, gone through a really bad accident uh, where I broke a ton of bones in my body. I was in the hospital. I was trying to work my way back into, you know, acting and, and doing the things that I loved. Uh, and then I lost my father to cancer. So I was going through that. And it was just this, you know, whirlwind of basically turmoil. I was just in like a bad place mentally and physically, emotionally. And I feel like that's kind of where Jax was. And uh, after I got done reading the script, I was like, man, I have just, I have so much more intuitively to give to Jax than I would to give to Caden at that point in my life. And I think that's what makes films so great. And, you know, ultimately let uh, actors have the opportunity to win awards if they're in a certain yeah. position in their life where they really resonate with the character that they're playing, then they can give it its best performance and do it, uh, do it justice. So, um, once I read, you know, kind of what Jax was about, what he was doing, um, and he was kind of like his own demise, I, I resonated with that. And then I spoke to Castile about it and we really went over it and she was just like, you know, this is, this is perfect for you. And, uh, and then, you know, the rest was history. Okay. So you only, um, Audition for the one role. You only audition for the role of Jax. Uh, that right, or did you? Yeah. Actually, yeah. No, okay. no, no. I didn't audition for Kate. I just auditioned. I just auditioned for Jax. Okay. And you play an MMA fighter in the film. And do you have any connection to the sport, or do you, do you have like any experience before the filming started? Um. You know. It's interesting. I didn't have any experience really in the MMA world at all. Like mixed martial arts was definitely not a part of my life. Um, I would watch it here and there, but not frequently enough to say that I had any uh, knowledge really on the sport. But before I got the audition, um, and this is pretty interesting too, because I was in a, a position where I took some time off of acting. I wasn't sure if I really wanted to do it anymore. Um, I, you know, my dad was, was a big supporter of mine and he really loved it and losing him kind of put me into a position where I just didn't know if that was what I wanted to continue doing. Uh, so I took some time off and in this industry, you're only as good as your last project. So 
when you take time off like that and you haven't done anything in, you know, a few years, people don't look at you the same. Um, a lot of people won't look to get any insight on why you haven't been acting. They just automatically assume like, oh, he hasn't booked anything. So that's kind of where I was. And I was in between uh, agencies. I had been repped by one agency and the passion just wasn't really there. Uh, on both ends, I was kind of out of it. They, you know, two agents that I had were moving and transitioning. So it was kind of like this, you know, this eerie time. And I remember going to visit before I got Perfect Addiction. I visited like three or four different agencies. I won't throw any names out there or people, <laughs> people under the bus, but I got a bunch of no's and no one wanted to rep me. No one wanted to, uh, to take on, you know, me as a talent. And for whatever reason, they didn't give it. They just said, oh, the passion isn't there. Uh, we're not interested at this time. You know, just the kind of BS uh, sugar coating. And I think it was, it was maybe like a few weeks had went by. And I had met with all these agencies that gave me these excuses of why they didn't want to rep me but didn't take the time to sit down with me. They didn't give me the day to explain to them why I hadn't been acting or what I had been going through or even to just get some insight on my life to see where I was at and where my passions lied. So when that happened, um, I took some time and there was a there was a one meeting lingering and it was with the agency that I'm currently with now, and it was Gersh. There was a few agents there um, that we had reached out to, we got connected with. And it wasn't an immediate no. They were like, hey, let's get on a call and just talk through it. See where you're at, see what your passions are. See, and it was exactly what I had wanted to hear because you know I got to tell my side of the story. So I get on the call, I sat there for about two hours and I talked to um, Nathan, Mike and Brett. And they all understood where I was coming from. They took you know, what I had been through and took it to heart and understood that these are things that happen to people and you know, it sidetracks your life a little bit, but they were willing to take a chance on me and they, they looked back at the projects that I had done, didn't care that I hadn't done anything in a while. And right when that meeting had happened, I did have a little pull because Nancy Nair, who was a casting director for Perfect Addiction, she actually reached out directly to Luke through my Instagram. So I had my managers, he's been with me since he's the guy who found me, Luke Simone. Um, mm-hmm. He's been with me from the jump since day one. And he got an email from Nancy for Perfect Addiction. So we didn't even have any representation when I got this movie. And when I got the film, I had a chip on my shoulder. Um, and I, as soon as I read it, I said, I'm booking this. I don't care. I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to turn this in and I'm going to book this movie and I'm going to prove everybody wrong. And I had a lot of passion with that, but I had maybe trained a couple of weeks with like some boxing coaches and stuff like that before this, nothing serious. Um, I had just seen it on TV and been a little interested. It's a great workout, high cardio, very intensity. And it's, it's a good, uh, uh, stress reliever. So going into it, zero, really zero experience. And then once I got the role, I was training twice a day as if I had a fight. And that was really my, my driving motivation was to just give it this authentic feel and go through what, you know, mixed martial artists go through in training for battle. Um, and I learned a lot, I learned a lot about the sport and I, I really love it. And I, I still continue it to this day. But that's so great that you had the chance to, you know, come back onto the big screen. And I'm very happy uh, that that all worked out for you so well. Um, I have the the next question would be, you have a lot of quite intimate scenes in the film. And I was wondering, what was it like for you to shoot those scenes? um, And how did you prepare for the role? I think that, you know, when you're filming intimate scenes, and you see them on screen afterwards, uh, they look a lot more intimate than they actually are. It's interesting because there's, you know, usually a close set when, when anyone's shooting a, a, an intimate scene and you have your director, you've got your DP and maybe like either hair and makeup or wardrobe in the room. 
and you're wearing like these, you know, strange diaper looking things. Uh, and it's, it's, it's not as it comes across on camera because, you know, when you're filming it, you're seeing it as a whole and you're in the room, you're immersed in it. Um, and you're trying to act as if it is a real situation when it's not. So, uh, you know, you have that awkwardness, but if you're comfortable with your scene partner, um, and you get to know them and, and, you know, you, you, you know, your, your, uh, I guess limitations as far as what the camera is seeing, what the camera isn't seeing, then you're more comfortable because they're not trying to, you know, expose you or put you out there in a bad light. And they're trying to frame you appropriately and get the shot so that it does feel authentic and genuine. Um, and I think they captured, you know, that really well. There's a ton of, you know, romance scenes between Kiana and Ross. Um, that I thought they captured really well, and and uh, I think they, they they encapsulated our relationships in a great way. Okay, can you just uh, tell me real quick what's like the most important message from the film? Most important message from the film, um, I think I think the film teaches a lot of things, but I, I'd say as far as uh, as far as like life goes and, and what this film kind of encapsulates for me is just persistence and just pushing through whatever hard times you may be going through. Cause everyone, excuse my language goes through shit and everyone decides to deal with that differently. So, um, the way you kind of get up and react, um, to certain things in your life ultimately depicts your trajectory and where you end up. You can get knocked down, you know, a hundred times, but if you're getting up 101 and you're choosing to face that battle head on, you're winning. You know, we're never going to stop losing in life. And that's, that's the, that's the key to life is to just get back up and keep fighting, keep going forward, keep learning from your mistakes, um, and ultimately choose to be the better person on the other end. So if you can do that, then you never really lose in life. Which is also your story, a little bit. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So that's why I was I was really excited and you know proud to be able to um, work with so many great people and bring this story to life. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Du weißt, dass sie dich nur benutzt, um sich an mir zu rächen.